Stephen B. Shepard. 20 Jahre lang war er Chefredakteur des legendären Wirtschaftsmagazins Business Week. Heute bildet er junge Journalisten an der City University of New York aus. Im Interview wirft der 72-Jährige einen Blick zurück in die alte Medienwelt und beschreibt die Herausforderungen für den Journalismus der Zukunft. We understood we were, this was when we started the planning four and a half, five years ago, we understood that journalism was changing and new technology was coming in, everything was getting digitized and that would cause some changes. But I confess we had no idea just how dramatic the changes would, would be and how fast they would happen. That's the most surprising thing, just the rate of change that this is happening. So we were able to build certain things in. We designed the curriculum. I think to take advantage of this new world. We hired faculty with that in mind, including uh, Jeff Jarvis. Uh, we designed the school. The whole school is wireless, and so people walk around with their laptops and they're online wherever they are in the school. So I think we understood, but we didn't get it right by degree. We didn't have any you know, baggage to get rid of. We weren't doing things the old way because we were so new, so we could, we could change as we, as we started. We didn't have anything to undo. There was no old way of doing things here. There was only the new way. Um, and because it's a young school, uh, and everybody understands what the mission of a new school is, it's a startup. So you have this, the attitude of a startup, which means you can change. So what advice I would have to existing uh, graduate programs in journalism Uh, it's hard to say. You've got to change, and it's harder to change if you've already done one thing. It's always harder. The main thing that students want when they come out of here, this is a professional school, and they want a job within the journalism profession. So we have two ways of helping them. One is the summer internship program between the second and the third semester. It's a year and a half program of three semesters. So they get internships. and. All of them, in the three summers we've, we've been open, they've all gotten internships uh, in, in, in the media world. And some of them get paid internships, which is great. Some of them get unpaid internships. And when they get unpaid internships, we give them a stipend of $3,000 for the summer. Because I, I want everybody on equal footing. I don't want somebody to say, I just don't have enough money. I have to work at Starbucks for the summer. Uh, to make money. And as far as I know, we're the only school of journalism that actually supports its students during summer internships. We support the students in their job efforts. We have two people in the career services department that work with the students and work with the companies in the industry to find a match between the student and the job. And the jobs are there. I mean, not everybody gets a job, especially not right away. It's a difficult time. But, um, you know, 75% of our last graduates are working in the profession. So that's pretty good for a serious economic crisis. Well, it's hard to generalize because each student has a different interest, you know, and some of them want to be long-form magazine writers for The New Yorker. But at the same time, you're going to get lessons in taking video cameras on the street and doing video for a website story. First of all, I think most blogs are not journalistic blogs, and they don't pretend to be. Uh, they're people giving opinion or doing entertainment or gossip or, or they're hobbyist blogs. You know, if you're a stamp collector, you can go to uh, lots of websites that are just for you as a stamp collector, and they're very, very valuable sources of information. But I wouldn't call it journalism, and I certainly wouldn't call Paris Hilton journalism. <laughs> Well, what I would say is, you know, you don't want to limit anybody's speech. So we do not license journalists uh, in the United States. Uh, anybody can be a journalist. Anybody can write anything they want. So we've got to be careful in any code of ethics not to circumscribe those freedoms. But I, do, I don't see anything wrong with a code of conduct or um, what some people call etiquette for bloggers. Uh, and then, you know, it's voluntary. Um, uh, but it could become a standard where people accept as a best practice of journalism in this new world. Uh, so I don't see anything wrong with having codes of ethics for, for the new journalism.
part of the blogosphere, the complaints about the blogosphere is that it's nasty. Uh, people are yelling at each other and cursing and, and there's a lack of civility. And I think one of the things the Code of Ethics would say is, look, etiquette matters. Good manners matter. If you want to complain about somebody's article or get your own point of view across, that's perfectly fine. But why don't you do it in a civil way? The main thing is that journalism used to be a one-way street. It was us, the content provider, talking to you, the audience. And now in this new world, it is much more of a two-way street. It is a conversation between the content provider and the user of that content. That's point one. So uh, the, the second point is, is corollary to the first, is that journalism is going to increasingly become a collaboration between the professional and the citizen journalist or the amateur covering a community. Who knows more about the public school system in Brooklyn than a parent in Brooklyn who has children in the public school system. They have a strong interest, they know what's going on. We as professional journalists need to tap into those communities if we want to cover the schools in an effective way. It doesn't mean that every parent is right uh, about the school system, but it means it's, a, it's some information. And then you report with some other parents. And so we can collaborate with the community in a way that we're never able to do. It gives more people more voice in the process of journalism. Journalism is no longer a product a newspaper, a magazine, a television program. It is a process, a two-way street. That is the most fundamental, profound change uh, that's going on. And of course, the means of consuming journalism have changed. It's going to be much more mobile, much more multimedia, anytime you want it, any place, any time kind of thing, instead of waiting for the newspaper to come out in the morning. That's a major change, too. <laughs> I do very little of it, you know. I find uh, I do enough of it to understand what its potential is for journalism. But I'm not, and I'm interested in Facebook and Twitter as journalistic tools. I'm not interested in being on Facebook and have 150 followers or friends uh, that I keep up with every minute of their lives. I mean, I don't have time for it. It doesn't interest me. I have enough real friends. But as a journalistic tool, I have to sort of stay abreast of what's possible. You shouldn't unless you have a passion to be a journalist. That is the number one reason to be a journalist, is that you really want to be a journalist. You have an interest in finding out what's news, what's important. You have an interest in disseminating that news. You want to comment on that news. That's why you should be a journalist. If you don't have that passion, don't be a journalist. Yeah.